What's up YouTube and welcome back to the EJ257 single overhead cam hybrid build. Uh, in this episode I am going to try and fix this high pressure oil issue. So I'm going to try and take the uh, relief valve out of the old oil pump from the old 2.5 block and put it into the new oil pump that I bought. Um, I did actually talk to the seller that sold me that oil pump. Uh, they've never had that problem before and uh, he was kind of surprised to hear or, or at least surprised to hear read what I wrote him and uh, he said it was no problem to send me a replacement so uh, he said he's, he's gonna put a replacement in the mail for me but it'll probably be a little while and I don't have time to wait for it so I'm gonna try this first and uh, if it works it works um, you know I always I also had the idea well maybe it's an oil filter because a lot of oil filters have a check valve in them but uh, I mean I even have an extra filter here I could have tried but I just I, I, I've never seen an oil filter do that and I'm probably a couple thousand oil changes I've done so I'm gonna start taking the front of the uh, the front time covers off and the crank pulley and get down to the belt and see how accessible the the pressure relief valve is in behind the cover without actually removing the timing belt because um, I, I don't want to I want to take as little apart as possible to get this done but I might get down there. I, you know, I'm not really sure how the belt crosses in front of it and whether I'll be able to get in behind it to get the valve out or not. So I'm going to peel it down to that point and then uh, I'll start up the camera and we'll pull out that pressure relief valve and see what it's all about. So I thought I might even have to take the rad out because you know it is a it is a double row radiator and it, it does have slim fans. So I was able to actually sneak out the uh, the bolt for the crank pulley and the pulley and get the covers out. I had to drop the the big cover down through. But uh, the the valve is just down here, and to get the plug out for it, well, the belt's gonna have to come off, and it looks like this idler and the tensioner might even have to come off. So I was hoping I didn't have to do that. But now that I'm here, I might as well just uh, line it up and pull the belt off and uh, remember what that belt was like to get on there, right? <sighs> oh. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll peel the belt off, get the, the idler and tensioner out of the way or whatever I need to, and then pull the valve out and go over to the used block and pull the valve out of it. So I'm a little bit amazed but this is the first time I've ever seen something like this and uh, probably 95% of the people that see this video will never even heard of this or seen it before but I'm I've got I'm just lining up all the timing marks on the time belt cranking the engine by hand and as I crank it by hand the oil filter gasket still spits oil out like it's still tightened on there I left it the way it was but as I crank it oil spits out of there. Uh, have you ever seen anything like that in your life? Because I haven't. <laughs> okay, so I've got the time belt off. I've got almost everything off and I started noticing a lot of oil down here. Um, traces of oil have gathered up on top of this lip of the pump. The, the the front seal looks dry, the cam seals look dry, so I don't know if this pump just started shooting oil out of the, out of the sealant. I think, I think I'm just going to change out the entire pump for the pump off the other engine. And ma mainly because I just don't have a lot of time to waste. Uh, I know the other pump is a good known pump, and putting it on this engine should make it not have a problem anymore. Uh, I can't think of any other oil restriction this thing would have. You know that there's no not no modification to the head gaskets required so all the oil would just make their way up into the heads and the oil galleries, return galleries are huge on these things so um, and I mean ha ha even having this line capped off at the end well that's the way it is from factory it just leads up to a pressure sender I really haven't modified anything else with the oil except for the 
you know the put the different oil pan on so I'm gonna change the pump and uh, start putting it all back together so I'm gonna probably I don't know I might spend my little bit of more time out here but I'll I'll probably end up working it on again tomorrow night and finishing it up then at least getting another start up I'll try it and I'll try maybe the same oil filter and if it happens again then I'm just gonna have to try a new oil filter and then other than that I don't know I'm gonna scratch my head and have to push this thing out um, but I don't think it's gonna come to that I think just swapping out the oil pump is gonna fix this problem and uh, let's just hope so so I just ended up diving right in I got the oil pump off the other engine I've got the oil pump off of this engine uh, so externally didn't actually see anything wrong and so I decided I would take the the spring out of the new pump to try and see what was going on with the valve and like I can f see the valve in there but of course I, I don't know you know what exactly is the valve and the valve is actually this guy right here so looking through that hole that is the valve and here is the valve on the pump that's come off of um, my other engine, the old engine. And as we can see, it's a 9mm. Th this pump is not actually marked anymore. It looks like they shaved it off when they uh, rebuilt it. So, uh, I've got the spring out of both pumps. And just like I suspected, Here's our good known pump with a moving valve. And here's the new pump from eBay. And the valve is jammed and seized in place like someone hammered it in there. But yeah, that does not just only cost me time. Uh, that's like a jug of oil, half a bag of floor dry. Um, and you know, if it damaged the filter gasket, which I know it has, and the filter gasket's still good, then you, you got to get another filter. So I know what the problem is. I know there's nothing else going to be going wrong with this thing. Uh, I'm not waiting for the other oil pumps. Probably go ahead and, and clean this pump up just a little bit more. I tried to clean up some of the crud off of it. Um, and uh, go about resealing it, getting it back onto the block. But I'll probably do that tomorrow. Uh, I'm just happy that I, instead of just putting the pump on, I actually, you know, tried to look to see what the problem was and found it. So, uh, now I know there's, I'm going to be good to go as soon as I get this other pump on and just maybe an hour tomorrow night, hour and a half the most, and I should have this thing back together and running and, uh, we'll do another quick clip of it running probably. And then I got to get the car outside cause I got other stuff to do. So the new oil pump is on. I've got all the timing back together, uh, but I don't have the covers on. And main reason is I want to ensure that I don't have any seal leaks before I end up putting everything together. And just to ensure everything's going to be right after seeing that check valve the way it was in the oil pump, I'm sure this is going to correct it. So I've got the uh, actually the same oil filter that I had on before that was blowing out the gasket. I've got it back on. I've got the whole thing topped up with oil and uh, it might be a touch low on coolant because of the coolant leak. Uh, there's plenty of coolant in it so it's not like I won't be able to run it and as long as it's not going to spit out oil um, I should be at least able to back the car out and uh, clean up here a bit a little bit to work on something else. So we're going to go for a startup again. This will be the uh, the second time running it. And uh, I probably won't run it right to operating temperature just because there's no exhaust, no primary O2 sensor, and we do have a coolant leak. But at least get a little bit of run time just to uh, make sure nothing crazy is going to happen. No, nothing more crazy is going to happen. Um, so yeah, only way to find out is to turn the key and try it.
So as you saw, the car started, it ran, it does not leak any oil anymore, which is something I shouldn't have had to deal with. Um, it's kind of one of those one-off things that happens every once in a while. Uh, if you're in the trade doing it daily, yes, you run across this stuff. If, if you know, I was uh, someone without a lot of knowledge working in my own garage, I did my own engine, put it all together and it did something like that, I'd be in a panic because I just wouldn't know where to go first. Um, but realistically, because that, you know, I didn't really change any of the internals other than putting a set of pistons in it. They don't really, you know, do anything for oil pressure. And just realizing that I did put the new pump on it and uh, just going straight after the pump and pulling it out and seeing that relief valves jammed in there the way it was. Obviously that's what caused the problem. The car's good now. Uh, whether, you know, those pistons are seating in there properly with the rings, you know, uh, gonna take a little bit of time to figure that out. I'll probably, I'll probably drive the car around a bit after I get it all fixed, like finished, and uh, drop the oil out of it relatively early just to kind of give it a flush even though it's already had one. And at that time I'll, I'll pull the plugs and I'll probably do a compression test. So I really want to see what number four is compared to the other cylinders and how how reliable this engine might actually be. But now that I got the car out, I've got the garage cleared. I do have to do another job for somebody. I will make a video on that and put it up. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.